Hey guys, John from FlyMikeAlpha.com and today we're here to talk to you about flying at night and what we need to do in advance of our first night flight. So there's a few extra things we want to take into consideration when we're going to be going flying at nighttime or in dusk uh, near dark conditions. So first thing we want to do is take into account what kind of lighting we have at the airport to see to get around. So let's take a look at our home airport here in Venice and we discover we have a rotating beacon, a green and white rotating beacon in operation from sunset to sunrise. So we can see that to help us find our way back to the airport. Now as far as taking off out of the airport, we can see that we have lights, but there's a lightning restriction, so probably pilot controlled lighting. We could check NOTAMs and check the AFD to let us know that yes, there's pilot controlled lighting. If the runway and taxiway lights are turned off, we can turn them on with either three clicks for medium I'm sorry, three clicks for low, five clicks for medium, and seven clicks for high of the mic within five seconds. So you have five seconds to click the mic three, five, or seven times. Now, in addition to the runway edge lights and the, um, the taxiway lights and things like that at the airport, we want to be familiar with what other sorts of lighting systems we have. So we could go ahead and look up into the AFD. And looking at the AFD here, we'll just go ahead and click on that to make it a little bit bigger here. The AFD for Venice Municipal shows that we do have approach lights for runway 31. And it shows that we have pappies on the left side of 31, left side of 5, left side of 13, and left side of 23. And those are also pilot controlled. Shows us our locations of our wind socks so we can easily identify those at night. And it'll tell us about all the different types of lighting included at the airport. Lighting, medium intensity runway lighting, runway 05 and 23. Runway 13 and 31 has the same. Real on runway 5, runway 13, 23, and Odell's on runway 31. So, real being runway and identifier lights, those are those little strobe lights we see uh, at the end of the runway on the corners. Now, the other things we want to look at here is when is the airport attended? So, when can we actually receive services there at the airport? Well, it's attended from 1200 Zulu to 0000 Zulu. And so, of course, we have to convert that to local time, depending on what time of the year it is, minus four, minus five hours. And then we'll look here at any other pertinent information that might apply to us at night. And it looks like, oh, it's an untired airport, so there's nothing really um, too big to be concerned with, anything that shuts down certain times of the day. So we'll go ahead and now go back to look at maybe we're flying to the Punta Gorda Airport. So we want to go ahead and look at Punta Gorda and see what sort of services they have over there, what kind of lighting they have. Well, again, they have a green and white rotating beacon that will help us find the airport as we're approaching it. Then once we find the airport, well, if it's after a certain time, there's lighting limitations and it'll be pilot controlled lighting. Now when the tower is open, I'm sure they'll have the lights on for us. And when the tower is closed, we'll have to turn them on ourselves. So the next big question here is, well, what times are the tower open and what time is the tower closed? And then what happens to the airspace? What happens when the tower closes? Well, again, we can go ahead and look at the AFD for Punta Gorda. And we'll find here, now, one important thing to know about the AFD or chart supplement here, so we want to make sure we're using a current one. Using something from an online website like Skyvector may not necessarily be legal. You want to be using a current um, F FAA up-to-date uh, chart supplement. So from the FAA website would be a great place to go ahead and get that. So. Uh, let's see here, what applies to us at night? Well, uh, we have certain runway and identifier lights. We have PAPI lights, it shows where the PAPIs are on the airport. And we can identify the end of the runway with the reel. We can also go ahead here and let's see when the tower opens and closes. Well, it looks like the tower is in operation from 1200 Zulu until 0200 Zulu. So when that tower is not open, looks like we'll just be announcing on CTAF. We'll assume that we're going to be using pilot controlled lighting, the three clicks, five clicks, and seven clicks. And when the air traffic control tower is closed, clearance delivery frequency is available on 127.05 and monitored by Fort Myers approach. So the airspace also changes from class D between these times when the tower is open and all other times it is class E airspace. An important thing to note to make sure that we're abiding by all our legal cloud clearance requirements um, per 91.155. And let's see if we have anything else pertainable to us at night about this airport. 
Well, it's attended continuously. That's good news. There's fuel available 24 hours, credit card service available. That's a great. So if you don't have any cash on you, you can buy fuel 24 hours a day. And that looks like that's about it. That's pertinent to us. We could probably raise the FBO since it's attended 24 hours a day on 122.975 for the FBO. And that looks like about it. So the uh, chart supplement uh, used to be called the AFD. Now they call it the chart supplement is a great great tool for finding out all these things applicable to you at night that you may not care so much about during the day. Now other things we have to be concerned with are going to be notums that apply to us at night such as pilot controlled lighting inoperative that would be bad or runway lights out of service pappy out of service perhaps um, maybe of course any runway closures would be concerned with day or night but any other pertinent notums to our route of flight um, that may apply to us more so during the nighttime than rather than in the daytime, especially tower lights um, that are burnt out, things like that, that we care about a little bit more at night than we do in the daytime. So getting an appropriate briefing from flight service before you go flying. And then um, after we've determined all that, we know how to find our airport, we know what sort of facility we can expect when we get there. Let's go ahead and talk about what we actually need to legally fly at night. If we were a private pilot, what kind of currency we have to maintain? Well, we need to have uh, three takeoffs and landings to a full stop every 90 days, and they have to be done one hour after sunset and one hour before sunrise. So if you're going to carry passengers, you have to do those three takeoffs and landings. Now, if you're not with passengers, you can go fly whenever you want, um, as long as you're legally current otherwise. It may not be proficient, but you may be legally current to do so. So to establish currency for night flying, if we're going to fly with passengers at night, then we need to go ahead and do three takeoffs and landings to a full stop every 90 days, and they need to be done one hour after sunset or one hour before sunrise when it's good and dark. Now we can legally start logging night flight time after civil twilight. So let's say, for example, that the sunset today in Venice is 8 p.m., or we'll just go ahead and look up here, um, sunset and sunrise times. So today, uh, sunset is 8.16 p.m. Well, civil twilight, we know it stays light a little bit later than that, so it's probably not going to get good and dark until, or more dark, until, say, 8.45. That might be civil twilight. And then after civil twilight, at 9.16, an hour after sunset, it will be very dark and good for doing our night currency landings. So civil twilight is when we can start legally longing nighttime, when the sun goes down below the horizon, and then after that when it's a little bit darker. And as far as carrying passengers, we're actually allowed to carry passengers on board our aircraft 59 minutes after sunset if we haven't done those three takeoffs and landings every 90 days. So if you're going to be flying with passengers more than one hour after sunset, then you need to go ahead and do three takeoffs and landings to a full stop one hour after sunset. Other things to take into consideration here is how much fuel we're required to carry on board the aircraft. Well, at nighttime, we're required to carry 45 minutes of fuel on board as a reserve rather than just 30 minutes. And that's 45 minutes at cruise power. So if we're burning eight gallons an hour in cruise, we need to carry six gallons of fuel or land with six gallons on the tanks as a reserve. Um, now that's still getting pretty close. I like to use an hour at any given time and usually I use a higher cruise setting because we may not burn that much fuel in, um, in cruise flights. So usually I'll carry at least eight or 10 gallons in the tanks when I'm landing at least, um, especially at nighttime. Other things to take into consideration will be required equipment that's different at night compared to during the daytime. So, you know, at, uh, in the daytime, we don't need our position lights to work. So if we don't have position lights working on the aircraft, we have one of those burnt out, not that big a deal as long as it's properly placarded and all that, so it's not required for day VFR flight. However, position lights are required on an aircraft at night. So our red and green and white navigation lights are required to be on the aircraft at night and be functioning. And we run those from dusk to dawn. We have to have them turned on. So that could be a deal breaker for going night flying if the, one of those light bulbs is burnt out. So required equipment 91205 does change from day VFR to night VFR. So the other thing to take into consideration at nighttime is our eyes and how they function. Well, they typically say that it takes about 30 minutes for our eyes to adjust to night flying. So when we, the time we leave fluorescent lighting that's very bright inside the FBO, we want to give ourselves 30 minutes of um, 
no artificial light for our eyes to adjust and using only red light, maybe a red flashlight to do your pre-flight around the aircraft so that does not disrupt your night vision as much. Uh, our eyes also are set up in a way that in the daytime the cones right in the middle of the eye see very well and those um, are what you use typically if you just focus directly on something you'll see it very well, it'll be right in front of you. However, at night we're using the rods. The rods help us in low light conditions and we have to use what's called off-center viewing. And off-center viewing simply means you look at something and even though you're focusing on something directly in front of you, the best way for you to identify it is to actually kind of use your peripherals to see it. So if you want to see an object directly in front of you, look slightly left or right of it and then use your peripherals to examine it. So when we're searching for traffic at night, we always use our peripherals to try to find traffic since we're better off um, with off-center viewing compared to we have that little dead spot or that little blind spot directly in front of us. So if we look directly in front of us and focus directly in front of us, we do have a little bit of blind spot there at night and it's usually best to use off-center viewing trying to use your peripherals to judge any sort of relative movement around the aircraft to find traffic at night. Now the other thing about flying at night is when you first take off, you're going to be predominantly on instruments. Especially if you're taking off of say runway 27 at Venice, or I'm sorry, runway 23 at Venice, and you're facing the water, and you come right off runway 23 and you're directly over the black water on a moonless night, you have absolutely no visual reference as to which way is up. So you're going to be on instruments on departure. So make sure you have some instrument training before you jump into night flights and also make sure that when you are flying at night as a private pilot you're proficient on instruments and proficient flying on instruments you can trust the instruments you won't do anything silly like try to trust your inner ear or trust your body sensations instead you must trust the instruments and follow them and fly the aircraft simply by reference to instruments until you get turned back around maybe here and aim back towards the mainland and you can see city lights and things like that below you and that gives you a good idea of where the horizon is be aware though, at night, some of these cities are kind of off at an angle here, and they may give an optical illusion to a slanted horizon where the lights end and the dark swamp begins. And so you may actually accidentally align yourself to a false horizon at night with using those city lights and end up in a turn and probably in a descending turn. So always be referencing your instruments at night and trust your instruments. Don't try to fly just by the seat of your pants without referenced instruments during nighttime. Also, when you're planning this flight, say from Venice to Punta Gorda, if you would normally do this flight at 1,500 feet or 2,500 feet, consider adding a little bit of altitude to that since you need to have a little bit more time at night to find an uh, engine out landing site should you have any problems. You want to have a little bit further glide distance, maybe to a more suitable landing site instead of over a lit up city that you might be flying over. You want to fly towards a darker area where there's going to be open fields and unpopulated areas for you to land an aircraft engine out. So add a little bit to your cruise altitude at night just because. The next thing we'll go into in our next video is how to fly the aircraft at night and what it's going to look like. It's going to be very dark over the windscreen. You're going to be trusting those instruments and most importantly you will have had proper preparation for your night flight looking at the airport facility directory or the chart supplement to make sure you know what kind of lighting to expect, how you're going to identify the airport, where you're going to find it amongst all these city lights, and what sort of runway lighting to expect as well as how to control the lights at the airport and what sort of facilities are available at the time you arrive. Punta Gorda Tower closes at 10 p.m. so if you're planning to get there at 10.05 expect to contact CTAF rather than the tower. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at mikealpha.com. We'll see you all next time.